I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hey there, ghost schools and everything in between. We at the Savannah Underground are extremely excited to say that we have officially launched our Patreon. The link is in our description, or you can search patreon.com slash Savannah Underground. So head over to our page and join us for bonus content, merch drops, live investigations of haunted locations, and just getting to know us, because we really want to get to know you. Enjoy the episode and stay spooky, y'all. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another bonus episode of The Most Haunted City on Earth. My name is Madison Timmons. And I'm Chris Susie. And we have Luna Taran again. Hi, guys. I'm Luna Taran, and I'm a ghost tour guide in the Savannah Underground. Yep. So we are honestly so happy to have Luna back with us. We did another episode, and we had so much to talk about with Indonesian ghosts and folklore that we just had to bring Luna to talk more about that. So actually, before we started rolling, um, Luna was telling us about a new spirit that her mom told her about this morning. Would you like to yeah. tell us a little about it? So my mom actually, she was invited here, but she's actually a scaredy cat because she's more sensitive than I am. But she told me yesterday after shower, she's like, Luna, I'm like, yeah, do you remember when you were four years old and your little sister was two? I'm like, yeah, I remember somewhat. She's like, yeah, we went to Medan, remember? Medan is like another part of Indonesia. And I said, yeah, I remember that. What's up? Oh my God, Luna, I need to tell you this, but there was actually, we were staying at the haunted hotel. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I couldn't sleep for days and I always have had to hold your dad's hand everywhere the bathroom the kitchen everywhere part of the hotel i'm like what so and then my mom told me yeah so there's this lady you were four and your sister was two at the time but i think they wanted to disturb you but i've been protecting you this is called wewe gombel wewe gombel is a ghost um she's a lady she has long hair and her and she is completely with no clothing. She's just walking around and she loves to haunt children. And it's very, very scary. And luckily, my mom has a lot of protection to like protect, pro- protect us. Sorry, my accent, protect us. And we were just protected. She called the receptionist, receptionist, right? Yeah. Receptionist so many times, hey, we got to change hotel room. We got to like, we don't want to be in this haunted room. Thank you. We don't want to be in this haunted room because it's so haunted and I can feel something. And you know what he's, the call, the receptionist said, oh, our room is all fully booked. So we were staying in that haunted hotel for seven days. Delightful. Yeah. So you were saying that like this spirit was kind of known as like a spirit that if kids stayed out too late, she would come and try to like get you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll insert a photo of it here because she showed it to us and I was like, well, isn't she just delightful, you know? Oh, scary. But also the main thing of Wewe Gombel is that you play, uh, if you go out at night, if children go out at night and stay for too long, too late, then they will like, then that Wewe Gombel will actually like chase you or haunt you or possess you. But this Wewe Gombel that I've learned from my mother, I think it's because she's desperate for like, a child or something and me and my sister we were we were probably the only child and we were in the most haunted room so there's that well, yeah, i find scary. it endlessly uh, fascinating that in indonesian ghost lore uh ghosts are classified you know by their function and you know this appearance uh because in the west we oftentimes will either ascribe a ghost by who they were in their life you know we just know that that ghost is, you know, well, well, that's Tim, you know, Tim yeah. the ghost. Yeah. Um, but we, on a larger scale, and we don't even notice it in the West, we don't talk about this, but there are very specific tasked ghosts, ghosts that have purposes. Um, the lady in white, mm-hmm. uh, the lady in black, the lady in gray, a lot of ladies in colors. Um, but they, they have specific purposes, like, uh, you know, a lady in white is oftentimes mistaken for the hitchhiking ghost. 
uh, because a lot of times Lady in White is seen on the side of the road. And it usually means you're going to have an accident. It usually means that an accident in your life is imminent. A lady in black means that a child in your family is going to die. So it's interesting that we don't really talk about the fact that these spirits are not specific beings, but specific conditions. You know, yeah. the, the boogeyman situation, you know, coming to get you. Uh, it's a widespread thing. And, uh, and I, I, I love that there's a name for every, oh, yeah. every type of yeah. spirit in Which Indonesia. Which is like, the names are so like, a little like the names itself. When you hear it, it's already scary. Right. Like wewe, like wewe gombel. That, that gives me creeps. Like pa chong. Like these names that I've learned and I've heard, it's actually already scary. Like the moment when I had no idea what pa chong is or wewe gombel or um, sundobalong. Like when I don't know those words or like when I don't know these names, hearing it scares me to death already. Which is, uh, yeah, these names are actually pretty unique itself, yet scary to hear it already. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, you oh, know, yeah. It's, it's fascinating because, again, we, we approach our spirits differently. But, you know, different cultures, like there's a La Llorona, which is very similar yeah, to the, the long black hair, the, the white dress, but she's looking for her children. She's, she, so with her, you hear her crying. You're this this wailing of this woman who's who's mourning, yeah, and uh, and she's coming for your kids. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bottom yeah. line is, you have kids. Uh, this ghost might be coming for you. So, mm -hmm. it, it again, the function of the spirit identifies it. Yeah. You know, it's not a specific ghost as much as it is a specific type of ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. But do you guys remember the day where I told you where there is a demon in my bathroom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've actually learned the name. And I finally found it because I asked my uncle that night. It yeah. is called Genderuo. Genderuo. So it is basically like like an, a, a bottomless snowman, but in a version of a scary horror type, I think. I think a bottomless snowman is also very scary. But yeah, it's if like you, if Bigfoot, you ran into but one, yes, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but be, it's like Bigfoot, but the horror version of Bigfoot. It's Basically, there's fangs, and you guys can see the photo later where we're going to insert it. It's right. like... Um, it, it's like an Indonesian cryptid. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, because we were just talking about cryptids, and so... But does it exist in a spiritual plane, or does it exist physically? Like, do people encounter it, like, troping around? Because when you had introduced it to us, it was a, it was a bathroom ghost. Yeah. Is it always a bathroom it's not entity, really a bath or is it just your bathroom? <laughs> yes. <it's laughs> no, 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 no. Gunderu is actually everywhere. Like, okay. jinns and Asian ghosts and jinns, they're everywhere. So, basically, Gunderu just loves to be my bathroom because in the back of my bathroom, there um, there's, like, a hidden dark wall where um, it's, like, not even put with anything. It's just... Um, my shoe rack and stuff, so it's near my bathroom. So at the same time, the Gunderu loves to be in a dark spot and loves to be in my bathroom. Sure. So it's not really the bathroom ghost. It's literally everywhere, which yeah. is scary. Yeah. Well, mind you, bathroom ghost is scary to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do not want to encounter you don't the, want bathroom, that. The, the bathroom beastie, but um, fascinating. That scary. Fascinating. Yep. Yeah, kind of harping in on the idea of like names for these entities. I feel like that's true in almost any culture that has some kind of monster or ghoul or demon or whatever, they always have a creepy name because they look scary. I'm like, you're not going to see this bloodied face monster and call it kitty. You know, it's like something cutesy or like... We've done a bad job. Yeah. Uh, we, the Jersey Devil has never seemed particularly uh, menacing to me. Mothman is yeah. not a particularly scary name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bigfoot. Bigfoot sounds pretty cuddly when you think about it's it. It's true. Um, and and I, one of my favorite words is Sasquatch. What a great yes. word. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. And Sasquatch, you could be like, okay, that could go either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that could be very menacing. But uh, yeah, we're bad at it. We're like, the lizard man. I was like, oh, okay, the lizard man. The dog man. What's the dog man? Well, he's a man, but he's got a head of a dog. Yes. Dog man. And uh, yeah, we suck. We, we <laughs> did get Chupacabra right. So that, that but was... I don't think that's us. That was... Oh, know. that's true. That, <laughs> gosh. We do suck. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to think of scary named things. And we don't really... Ha even like the hag of uh, Gullengichi. Hag, 
was a long time yeah. just old woman, yeah. you know, yeah. concept. So when it, when I first was being introduced to being written by the hag, I was thinking of like, you know, the sea witch and yeah. know, things like that. It's, a, it's the hag. Uh, not thinking, you know, some horrible skin shedding gooey thing. Yeah. Um, I, which is nightmarish in all attributes. But when it's called the hag, you, you're like, well, I can handle a hat. Yeah, yeah. You know. because like when I actually wanted to learn the in, um, the English names of this Indonesian ghost, I'm like, okay, what's Pochong? Uh, I think it's, um, how do I call it in English? Because I've actually never heard the English word myself. Like, can uh, it, Describe. So I'll just describe it. Yeah. Oh, um, so one time I was talking to a friend and I was talking to him about Indonesian ghosts. And I said, yeah, you know, there's this really scary demon called the Pachong. And he's like, oh, what's the English word for that? Uh, I should say wrap body ghost because it's, the ghost is wrapped with um, yeah. cloth and something. So that's all I can explain. So the shroud. Yeah. We, but we, I don't think there's no. a like English word. Shrouded either. hopping beast. That's, that's <laughs> and that's what we'd call it. Cloth it's, hopping it's, ghost. It's the shroud hop. <laughs> yeah. The shroud hop's coming for you. Yeah. White cloth hopper. Yeah. White it, cloth hopper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And, and uh, you know, it might just be the the uh, the nuance of language mm-hmm. yeah. because yeah, we uh, we will we will oftentimes refer to people by their names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, well, this is where Captain Black walked down the, and. You're like, oh, it's it's the ghost of Captain Black. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also like to point out to viewers that all my life I have heard reference to pirate ghost stories, but I still never heard any. Like, <laughs> like I yeah. always hear that that's like the trope is, oh, you know, the pirate, the ghost captain and things like that. And I'm like, I'm not sure. I, I don't even think I've ever, and we talked about this, I've never seen a movie that was specifically about a ghost that was also a pirate. Um, so, uh, so if you're out there, internet world, uh, show me, show me the ghost pirate movies. Or if sea you are a ghost pirate. pirate. Yeah, if I you're guess. a ghost pirate. <laughs> by the way, the Savannah hockey team is called the Ghost Pirates. Yes. So there you go. Anyway, back to uh, Indonesian. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yes, I have another story to tell when I was in Hong Kong, but I've experienced this. So my friends and I went to this haunted hospital, and it's um, actually children's hospital. So when I went to the children's hospital, I think it's for like sick children who died a um, long time ago, who died really, really young and stuff. So, but it was abandoned for some reason that Hong Kong one probably like build another building for children hospital or they just don't want to, or probably the business just com- completely collapsed. So my friends and I, <laughs> shout out to Daisy and Meyer, we went to, we saw this huge building it was near um central part of hong kong so we were like you know what screw it let's jump off the fence because it was already blocked it was completely abandoned so we went um we jumped right there and we actually went to the rooftop first like there was a stairs to the rooftop and beautiful we can see the whole hong kong but then we went downstairs again and the door was completely unlocked so that we're like okay you know what let's go so when we opened the door I saw thousands of children and babies staring at me. Probably these lost souls wanted to be saved and everything. But then Meyer and Daisy, my friends, they were not clairvoyant. So when they were just walking, they're just, oh, (laughs) there's nothing here. But me, I was completely like holding their hands in the middle and just cover my eyes because I was already scared. So when we arrived at the middle of the room, it was like this whole children staring at me. I was like, oh, poor babies. And they were touching me, wanting me to save them. But unfortunately... I do not have those powers to save them. Um, from what I learned, there's some, it is related to Indonesian ghost. Um, it is called Tuyul. Tuyul are um, ghost children and babies. Um, because like like I said, like Indonesian ghosts are not just in Indonesia, but it's everywhere. It's in, um, it's in the whole wide world, in America, in Europe, everywhere. So I saw jinns, mostly in the ghost, uh, mostly in the hospital, the children's hospital. I saw like um, lost baby souls, lost children's soul, and I saw jinns as well, that's called tuyul, and they're actually scarier. Probably the tuyuls are actually controlling the kids, like you can stay with us, we're um, good people, but at the end of the day, tuyuls are very demonic children babies so they're very scary so guys and that 
is, is, is fascinating because um, in my life, categorizing and trying to figure out classifications of ghosts, I've learned that children ghosts and the younger uh, 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 a child dies, um, the more ability they have like uh, children ghosts are very vibrant and very solid and they have a lot of um uh energy that uh, uh older ghosts don't have and i attribute that to um to the lack of learning about life yeah, yeah. because when you when 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 we're raised we're there's a, there are points in our life when we're introduced to death to the rituals of death where we're introduced to the 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 temporary nature of life we're given a scope of life but when you die very young you're not given those things so you just think this is still life when you die very young, you have nothing to compare it to. So you're like, oh, this is the part of life where I can walk through walls, where no one can see me. And that allows a spirit to feed itself, which is interesting. I, I call it basically children have more imagination than adults. Oh, yeah. So a child can create this imaginary scenario that it thrives in. So children ghosts are, are also very pesky. They're very uh, touchy-feely, pushy. And, and in every category, I've noted it, and in every time I've, I've dealt with mass children, there's always a demon. There's always a dark creature that is basically feeding on this never-ending font of child. Uh, there was a ghost. And I, I, it's a demon that I call Six Eyes, and I call him Six Eyes because he has six eyes. Um, that's, that, it was easy enough. But uh, he has a chain, and on the chain are children. He's basically run the chain through the children and he pulls them along because he can torment these children's spirits and their torment equals reaction, interaction, energy. Um, and I've encountered this spirit once in Savannah and it is just such an interesting thing because it's like, okay, so there's this folklore that suggests that if you get a lot of children, especially if the children die simultaneously, yeah. if, they, if it was a mass event, a fire or explosion or whatever, then the, the predatory spirits... The, the spirits that, that come in to feed on the recently dead, because the recently dead have more energy to them. And then children have a never-ending supply of energy. In my estimation, a, an adult ghost will fade over time. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll pass into shadow and then pass into mist. Children don't do that. Children stick. They, they stick around because they're exploring and they're learning. And I, I always say that ghosts can't learn, but children die with an imagination intact and that imagination allows them to map the world around them whereas adults and it's not like well adults don't have imagination it's just a different brand of imagination like ours are conditioned through a lifetime of experience where a child's imagination is specifically geared to to teach them the world you know, their imagination is how they create the boundaries around themselves. So, uh, yeah, I think that, that, that children ghosts, especially baby ghosts, baby ghosts are terrifying. Oh, yeah. Um, Ooh, there's yeah. a, there's a, a cemetery locally that has a little plot for babies. Oh. And if you go there oh, yeah. at night, In it, is, yeah, yes. it is terrifying. And I've encountered very strange things there. And that, yeah, uh, it's called Babyland. The and then might that, be there. Uh, gives you this kind of idea that it, even less cognitive of the world are spirits that exist but have no definitions, no words. They only have want. They only exist in, a, in, a, in, in, in perpetual want. Wow. And, and that want is very powerful too, and it will draw darkness. It will draw, you know, those predatory. And I'd like to say that there's probably light spirits that are also drawn for protection. Um, the sad fact is, I never encountered. I yeah. don't. I, I, I don't have a good story about the, the the spirit of light who shows up and 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 is a guardian over these these souls. I only have the what was that? I don't Ooh, know. Yeah, I'm so scared. That scared me actually. <laughs> Woo. The um, well, it, it's interesting too with kids because you know we we've talked about this before where kids do have such a bright aura to them mm -hmm. they're so innocent and dark things love taking advantage of innocent things which is why we often see children getting possessed Absolutely. and um and even adults who have bright auras and a lot of innocence to them and a lot of uh, are very naive and we've talked about that too where you know when you even go into the astral plane and stuff if you have these 
bright energies to you, you're more likely to get hurt because these dark forces want you. Yeah. And I can believe it in Savannah, you know, because we had such a long history of really high infant mortality, yeah. you know, Absolutely. that that might be why we're seeing so many dark energies congregating with all of these kid ghosts. And it might be why we have so many kid ghosts also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> one, yeah. one might lead to the other. Oh, yeah. Wow. I had no idea. That yeah. reminds me of my friend because like it was my mom's um, my mom's friend's daughter, which is also my friend, um, we're the same age. So um, her f- uh, her whole family, they're not cl- clairvoyant at all. Like they can't see ghosts or anything. But this daughter of uh, like my mom's friend, shout out to Amanda. So Amanda, actually, she's a very quiet girl and she's not very bright. She's just always quiet, likes to see the world herself. And then suddenly like the clairvoyant in her kicks in without... Like, I think she's bright inside, so that's why the clairvoyant kicked in and she started seeing ghosts. One time she told me a story that she was doing. It all started where she was doing an exam, and then she looked to the, straight ahead near the door, and there was a woman standing right here looking at her like that, like, just with bloody eyes. I think it's Kuntilanak or Sundal Balong because they're both similar, but it's just, like, staring at her, and she starts screaming, and nobody... Like, actually, everyone was like, what's going on? Are you okay? But she was just screaming and crying, and they had to take her home. And then she confessed that, I'm seeing things right now. It's weird. And then my her mom knew of my mom, so she talked to my mom, because my mom's a clairvoyant, and my mom was like, yeah, it's because your daughter's really quiet, and she likes to, like, look around and probably bright inside. So that's why her clairvoyant senses opened up just because of her personality and her own being. So that can happen as well. Oh, yeah. Well, and it could have been, too, the fact that sometimes it just takes a strong enough entity to unlock those sorts of yeah. things. Like something that jarring, like seeing a woman with bloody eyes in a place that is so, so unnatural for it to be. It sometimes takes that much to for people to be like, okay, I am seeing things and... You know, those little things I see in the corners of my eyes, they're not coincidences. Yeah. They're not my brain just doing things. So it could have been like a whole combination, sort of. Ooh, very scary. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting, too, because then you start to really talk about what scares people, you know, uh, universally. Mm-hmm. You know, what is it that, that really frightens people? And, uh, and one of the telltells is how often when people are trying to come up with a scary thing, they come up with very similar images, you know, the sunken eyes and the, the, the pallor, the long face, these things that are basically the conditions of a corpse. You know, when you see a corpse going through its, its degenerative phase, you know, the eyes sink in and the, the bones become pronounced. And so we have lots of art that, that has that elongated or that darkened thing. Blood from the eyes is an interesting one, too, because it's such an alarming thing. If somebody was bleeding out of their eyes, it's one of the first things you're like, that's wrong. Something's wrong with you. And I can tell by looking at you yeah. that there's something wrong. And so we create these alarming, you know, uh, uh, things across the board. You show a, a, a person with bleeding eyes to anyone and they're like, oh, nope, that person's not well. Nope, nope, they're, nope, that's, that's not good. I, I do not like it. <laughs> and, and that is one of the fascinating things is what scares us universally becomes, um, I remember the first time I ever saw an actual picture of an anglerfish, which is, you know, in the deep sea, it's got this thing with the light on it, but its face is terrifying. It's got like teeth that go in all directions. His eyes are just big white gobbles. And, and you're like, that is the monster that a lot of people, you know, uh, H.P. Lovecraft like mm-hmm. made a living off of creatures like this, but never saw them. You know, we, we did not see these creatures when we were like, well, you know what's scary? Big sharp teeth because that will eat you and big open eyes because it, it, no matter where you go, <laughs> it's going to see you. Uh, so yeah, it's it's funny because a lot of our a lot of our monsters are like perfect predators. Yeah, you know, we're really scared of the perfect predator, um, skinwalkers, wolfmen, things like yep. that, because they can yep. see you, and then they can see you in the dark, and then they can, they can smell really you. That reminds me of like um, because in Indonesia, as you guys know, it's very haunted country. Hospitals, especially, there's a lot of ghosts in Indonesian hospitals, especially old ones. Even though it's not abandoned, it's still right there. So one time my uncle went, my clairvoyant uncle went to the hospital to like took my um, cousin because my cousin was sick and he was sitting in the hallway waiting and he saw this demon 
and I've learned it from him as well. A few, I actually just learned this like a month ago that I totally forgot to mention it. It's called Sustering Asot. So Sustering Asot has like a, a history of its own where the doctors, from what I know, it com- uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Indonesians, um, it's like the doctor will actually cut her, um, cut the nurses. So Suster Ngesot means, I don't know what the word Ngesot is, but Suster means nurse. So it's basically a nurse ghost. Mm-hmm. So um, Suster Ngesot, yes. Um, basically the story of the folk tour, folk core is that um, the doctor was having some problems with the nurse and because the doctor was abusive, um, he, he will cut her legs and from that day on, Sister Ngesa is just a demon. Um, it will appear at night um, or sometimes in the mornings, uh, sometimes, if, uh, if depending on the ghost mood. And it will, like, drag themselves walking like this and blood gashing out the floor, like, like that. So it's, like, walking like... Yeah, the crawling ghost the is... The crawling, is, is, with is, no is legs at all. And... and exactly to long hair scary face like i said guys indonesian coast lots of long hair people it long hair goes strangely reminds me um and i don't know what culture it comes from but it's a ghost that wears a surgical mask and i think it's a nurse but basically under the surgical mask is like horrible deformity like the lips have been ripped off or something to that effect but where's the surgical mask and it's interesting because now that we're in the pandemic uh wearing a mask like that is so commonplace but if i'm not mistaken she comes up and she asks do you think i'm pretty and if you, if you don't answer the correctly she will slash your face Oh, the Chelsea smile kind of. Yeah, goes. the Gwyn, yeah. Gwyn, Gwyn plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so familiar because I... Isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, when you're talking about the nurse, I was like, there was a nurse ghost. What was the nurse ghost? It might I yeah. think it was, and I think it's 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 Asian in origin somewhere. It might be Thailand because Thailand maybe. is very scary too. So, so <laughs> scary. Like... Um, I think I watched a Thailand movie ghost and that traumatized me for life. So it's a theater ghost. And she was, so this ghost was actually um, a human before doing some um, acting. So one time there's a scene where she has to get hanged, like just like hanged like that, like getting killed. But then the director was like, you got to hang her more. You got to hang her more. And then when they actually pulled her more, they didn't realize that she uh, they did it too much, and she died in the set by mm. hanging. So from that day on, in the every time you go to theater um, in Thailand, if you go to a theater in Thailand in the movie itself, that ghost will appear hanging with white eyes, like no mouth, and she's just like, oh. And her eyes are completely white. And if you're there alone in the cinema, she will crush your eyes and you die. So your eyes are no longer, and she will eat your eyeballs. And no. you die in the <laughs> cinema like, yep, that Thailand movie. I forgot the name. But there is a, I don't an American movie, and I think it's a found footage movie called The Gallows. And it is, that, so the story being someone was actually hanged on stage during a production by accident, and then they haunt the theater. And I think the movie's about a group of kids who want to see if the ghost of that person is there. But, so, first off, every theater is haunted. Yeah. Every theater. Every theater, every single guys. one. Yes. And one of the interesting things about just that concept is the idea of what a theater is. A theater is a place where people gather, focus their energy, they, they all come together mm-hmm. to, to enjoy something. So it's a perfect place for a ghost to feel alive. A spirit can just sit amongst the living and experience the same thing as the living at the same time as the living. And then add big electric lights and we know that electricity is something that spirits can feed off of big electric lights lots of emotion high laughs and tears and and music and things so oftentimes in a theater you might experience ghosts that have nothing to do with the theater itself they they were just drawn in uh there are a lot of homeless ghosts in the world oh yeah everybody wants to believe that ghosts are like this house is haunted but the truth of the matter is it could be anywhere and lots of ghosts are just kind of milling about and then they see this bright shiny light and they'll go in um and with that knowledge any place that will draw spirits will draw the good and the bad just like you know? Betty. <laughs> right you know yep. they'll, they'll just come from in. the the savannah, savannah theater. Yeah. theater elizabeth yeah she does not like being called betty 
We, oh. we, we learned that the hard way. <laughs> really? <laughs> Jinkies. Oh, I've been so calling her that say, for a long time. Well, <laughs> that that was the classic. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I was introduced to Betty in 1993. Yeah. And uh, we called her Betty forever. And then we literally got like a EVP. Very clearly, it's it's Elizabeth. <laughs> like, oh, should I say that in the tour next time? Her name I, is. Yeah, Elizabeth. I'm gonna make that adjustment. I don't want to offend her. I right. don't want. Well, that. and that was I'm the interesting so thing is it, Elizabeth. It, it was so commonplace. We didn't even know who she was, you know. But since then, we've learned that there was a fire and that she was under the stage, under mm-hmm. the stage, getting and ready. And so, you yeah. know, yeah, it, fascinating like tidbits that came through a lot of research and figuring it out. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, I have a picture of Elizabeth. Noted. <gasps> Ooh, I do love it. I am interested in it. <laughs> yeah, because every time I do tour, I'm like a beautiful girl named Betty, a beautiful girl named Betty. Now I should say a beautiful girl named Elizabeth. And the boy is Benjamin. Yes, Ben. Oh, there's and another guy as well. There? Oh and yeah. The director is George. Yes. Although recently, uh, a, a, a very forceful male uh, answering to Billy has been present. At the Savannah Theater. So if you wanted to discuss Billy, who was a director at the Savannah Theater, seemingly. Interesting. Yeah, Yeah. Ben's the the little boy who, basically, he just plays jokes on people. Well, a lot of kids are like that. They they just like to tug on your clothing to get your attention. He well, he doesn't he like misfire cues and like so in the in the in the lighting. My Ben story is I used to, I worked in that theater for almost thirty years. And so um, I was a spotlight op on a show, and I'm following the actors, following the actors, and then I'm trying to follow the actor, and the spotlight won't move. And I'm like, that's weird. Why won't it move? And I turn and I look, and my extension cord was tied in a bow around the base of one of the um, you know seats, the bolted down seats. And I'm like, how is that? And so when I tell people, oh yeah, that, and mind you, we didn't even come to the name Benjamin until like 2000 in the aughts. So at the time, it was just a kid. And some people thought it was a girl. Some people thought it was a boy. Um, most people thought it was related to the woman on stage. Um, they were like, oh, it's, it's her child. It's like, oh, that's sad. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's, that's really tragic. <laughs> but uh, unre- they're unrelated. Yeah. They're about 100 years I do have a part. question, though. Um, in this place that we're interviewing right now, the underground, is there like a children ghost that I've been feeling as well? It is highly possible. Mm-hmm. Um, there is all sorts of energy that kind of bounce around in this area. Yeah. So it is very likely, especially because we talk about children ghosts so often um, in this building and especially just general i love talking about kid ghosts it's very likely one just is picking up on that we're giving that attention and Mm -hmm. it's kind of made its way here sure so absolutely yeah Yeah. i've seen like a various few there's only like two that are genuinely like kind of attached to this area but because my mom um when i took her to the underground when like she did the tour she likes the tours but when she she gets like a lot of like um how do we call it like Goosebumps, yeah, Yeah. goosebumps in the trolley. So when I told her, you can come into the show, she's like, no, I am not going in there. Oh, no, Luna, screw that. I'm staying in the trolley with you. I said, okay. But at the end, we took her in because I wanted to show her how it looks like, you know, like everyone's gone and she's in the underground. And she told me this. I don't know if she told you guys, but the moment she enters the underground, her body felt so much goosebumps, especially when she saw that bed, that Annab- it's Annabelle, right? Mm-hmm. The Annabelle bed, she looked at it like for f- straight 10 seconds because someone was there sleeping. It's probably a child and she couldn't feel her legs anymore. She was just like her whole legs turned white and she's like, yeah, I'm going out. But then... Um, I think the rest of the crew here was like, oh, we're going to, do you want to go into the demon house? And my mom was like, no, I'm staying in the spot. (laughs) No way I'm going. Because my mom also said in the demon room, she saw like a lady crying, which is true, right? And Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, there's a lady crying because every time I stare there, uh, stare there, um, I will cry. That's probably, um, it's probably 
one Asian ghost that I saw as well. It's like part of the Indonesian ghost that was so related. It's because Kuntilanak and Sundabalang, they're like I said, they're pretty similar. So I sometimes felt there's one there, but not disturbing. Probably just depressed from the war or something because like Indonesian ghosts um, are jinns that's also like um, related to um, it can be western ghosts too but it's also mostly Indonesian because Indonesians were I heard something oh, yeah. it's okay there's, I think there's it's, a lot of yeah. crickety crackities yeah oh um, scary yeah well, um, Indonesian ghosts um, they're just very they're just everywhere but like I think the western countries doesn't really know about them because the Indonesians I think saw it more and named them but they're actually like I said everywhere so I've seen some oh yeah absolutely. well it's interesting because uh, I'm, I'm called to a friend of mine who she used to live in um, Oglethorpe Square and one night uh, there was a woman crying outside in the courtyard of her apartment complex. She could, she looked out the window and saw this woman crying. It was like, you know, must have been a breakup or something like that. She, said, she told me that the next day when she was coming out of her building, the woman was still there in the courtyard just crying, crying, crying. So, you know, being the, you know, modern person she was, she just ignored the, <laughs> the woman and walked by. Yeah. But as she walked by, the woman turned and followed her followed her all the way to her classroom and she went into class and the woman literally was standing outside the building and when she came out of the class the woman was still there and so my friend was just like yelling at her like what is going on what are what is your problem and everyone around her was like who are you talking to she's like this woman so for 10 years that woman followed her everywhere never went into a building but followed her ever she said when she drives she feels the woman behind the car just being dragged along. Mm-hmm. And for 10 years, fl- when she flies, she says the woman is in the, in the cabin of the plane. When she's, you know, uh, so she got a house uh, in upstate New York that had a really long driveway. And the woman would stand at the end of the driveway. She wouldn't come up onto the property. Did and she specifically say what the ghost looks like? Long black hair, can't see her face. Hey, you know what covered that's called, their hands. guys? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, like and, uh, th- that's that's just it. It, 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 it. But it fits with all kinds because you know La Llorona looks like that, and you know um, there are lots of even accounts of banshees. Oh yeah, will, will sometimes you know uh, fall into that category. So it's interesting because it's like how fascinating that these cultures are able to identify well the crying woman. The crying woman yeah. is a constant ghost of every culture. Um, which is really sad because in, in Japanese, one of the scariest uh, yeah, Japanese stories is about the um, shogun samurai who wanted to marry a new woman, mm. so he poisoned his wife so that he could marry the new woman. But the wife, the poison was really terrible, and it, it hurt so bad that it took her days and days to die, and her lips turned black, and she started crying you know, blood, and, and she'd walk around, and she'd walk in the garden just crying all the time, and then finally she died. Well, the samurai started getting haunted by the sound of her, his wife crying, and when he would look at a cup, he would see her face on the cup, the eyes, and, and it kept just building and building until he could see her in the courtyard, crying, walking, crying, long black hair covering her face, but there's blood in her eyes, and she's crying. And so the new wedding day came, his bride's coming down, they're standing getting married, and the bride starts crying like that. He looks over, he sees his dead wife, and he kills his new bride with a samurai sword because he thinks that it's <gasps> his, his ex-wife. And he does it in front of everyone. Oof. So Ooh. it's such a, yeah, it's, yeah. It, and it's a potent story. And, and that's an old, hair ghost? of course. You know, always. <laughs> um, always. <laughs> I'm always wondering why this Asian culture has a lot of like long-haired women ghosts. That's what I've been wondering the whole time. Like Kundilana and Sundubalang, very similar. Sadako, a Japanese ghost mm-hmm. from like coming out the TV. Right, exactly. Long hair ghost too. Exactly. Like uh, the grudge. I'm yep. wondering what's the long hair specifically well, relate to. I mean, like I, I'm obviously not Asian, so I can only give you my kind of take of it. Yeah. But in a lot of cultures and history. Uh, your power is associated with mm-hmm. your hair. Oh. Um, you can see that even in the Bible where, you know, like uh, Delilah cuts Samson's hair right. and he loses all of his power, you know? So there's a lot of folklore that associates with that. So maybe that's how these spirits are kind of staying alive, you know, is if they lose their hair, they're no longer. Well, and there's also, oh. 
when you when you give to Asian culture enough, yeah. when you look at like prominent Asians and wealthy Asians and well-to-do Asians, the women are oftentimes with very elaborate headdress. Their hair is up, and that is how you can tell uh, their vibrancy of life was. They would keep it and ornate with jewels and everything like that. But these ghosts, it's down in front of their face. It's ragged. It's straight. It is suggesting that they are furthest from society mm-hmm. because they're not caring for this very outward appearance of themselves. You know, because um, hair is in in many places, even in America, like the way you hold, you keep your hair, the way you dress your hair, is an indication of how well you care for yourself, how you know yeah. how affluent mm-hmm. you are. You know, when people say, oh, your hair's messy, they think, well, that's low class. And so when you think of the dejected spirits, when you think of these spirits that live on the outline, the fact that they look like that kind of suggests that they are, they want something from you, you know, sure. <laughs> that they're, that they're yeah. not complete, they're not whole, they're not cared for. And so they are coming for you. Um, that, that's one way to look at it. I'm not saying that that's the answer. It's just interesting because you're right. Uh, that concept, uh, the hair, the long yeah. stringy hair and, and hiding the face and things like that. And that's another thing, hiding the face. Yeah, like Sadako, the Japanese yeah. ghost. You yeah. know, so many ghosts, uh, if you can't see their face, it's the mystery of it and the fear of it. You know, it, there should be a face there, but it's not there and I'm freaking well, out. You're hiding your face. I'm right. Asian and I still don't know why the long hair is related to them. <laughs> Thanks, Madison. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's just my guess. No, yeah. I that's think that's, yeah. that's yeah, a real, that makes sense so much. Yeah. 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 What about like, I'm curious about Korean ghosts <laughs> that you know. So yeah. I've seen my a- favorite Korean ghost story. Well, it's the, it's a Korean boogeyman and the Korean boogeyman <gasps> is named after uh, persimmons. Its name is persimmons. Uh, the Korean cute. word for persimmons. I, I know, right? It's I don't so even cute. know what it is. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, and, and, and it is the fruit, you know, the sweet, sweet fruit um, because when I asked my mom this when I was a kid, I was like, what's the boogeyman of Korea? You know, what's the monster of Korea? And my mom said, a tiger. I was like, well, it's just, it's just a tiger, well, right? It, well, you know, it's scary <laughs> because of tigers course. can come into your house and just eat you. And that, oh, was, that, yeah. was, that was a thing, apparently, at some point. The, the tigers were close enough to humans that they posed a threat. And then my mom would tell me the story about persimmons, which is the, the, the big bad boogeyman. And I was like... Okay, what's the story? And the story is actually very cute. Um, it's a, basically a tiger is skulking through a village, and this baby is crying. Baby and tiger. so the, the mother is telling the baby, please, 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 don't cry. The tiger will get you. And the tiger's out there going, yeah, I will. Here I come. <laughs> oh, no. And the mom is like, you must be quiet. You must be quiet. The tiger will get you. And the tiger's like, yep, I'm coming. Nom, 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 nom. And then finally, the mom says, well, what about a persimmons? And she puts a persimmons in the baby's mouth and the baby stops crying and the tiger freezes. And the tiger thinks, what is this thing that's more frightening than a tiger? The baby wouldn't be quiet because the tiger is coming, but it was quiet for a persimmons. So the tiger became afraid of persimmons because persimmons must be a worse and more scary creature than a tiger. So the tiger left for fear that it was going to run into persimmons. So persimmons became the name of the thing scarier than a tiger. <laughs> oh. And so they'll say, persimmons is going to catch you. The persimmons is going to catch you. The persimmons is coming for you. Roll a persimmon in front of the tiger and it will stop it. Persimmons. That's actually really cute. It's like a, um, it looks like a a tomato, but tastes like a a, a peachy. Is that like the English word? That's the English word. I don't, I don't actually know the Korean word. Oh, okay. But because my mom didn't say the Korean word, she Mm, said persimmons. Persimmons. (laughs) Yeah, they're they're really common, especially in the South. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's just a tiny little fruit, which makes it even more comical because tigers are like, Rah! and then like persimmons are just like, mm. yeah, yeah, it, because yeah. It, because yeah. It, because it made the baby quiet. The tiger thought it was more afraid of persimmons Cutesy than it was afraid of tiger, so it just became a common word to mean scarier than a tiger. So it, it becomes like a, a blanket term, like if something's really scary, it's a persimmon, <laughs> it's yeah. coming for you. Yeah. At first, where I thought you were going with this story was the tiger saw the baby and was like, oh, that's horrifying. (laughs) And I'm like, honestly, (laughs) what's scarier than anything else? A child. Yeah, Yeah. children are very frightening. Yeah. But but my mom does not indulge in ghost stories, nor does she tell them, nor does she like them. Same like my mother, guys. we, We were definitely never, like, familially, we did not talk ghosts. Um, my sister was very sensitive, 
but we were we were of a family that was very down to earth. You know, it's like what you what you see is what you get, and do what what you can with it. Yeah. Um, but in my case, uh, it was in Germany. We were just living in incredibly haunted places. <laughs> we were just yeah. living in these places. We moved to these places. Uh, I lived in uh, Italy. Uh, we moved as a family to Italy, and they were literally like, "Oh, you know, there's a." an old monastery up there that was taken over by satanic priests. And, you know, it's right there. It's right. One bike, bicycle ride away from where you're standing is a monastery that is that was solely used for devil worship. I'm like, am I supposed to just stay here? Yeah. <laughs> am I supposed to just live in this house knowing that there's this thing right over there? Yeah, that reminds me a lot of Bali. Because yep. Bali is part of Indonesia as well, but is but it is the most spiritual um, place ever. Very ghost, so many ghosts, and super spiritual. So one time, actually, my friends and I were on vacation like three, four years ago to Bali because graduation, high school graduation. Yes, so we went to Bali and we saw a statue, a very, very sacred statue. Like bear in mind, a lot. There's a lot of statues in Bali, and they're very sacred and very. Um, very haunted, not haunted in a good way and bad way somehow, but um, because Bali believes, uh, Bali is a Hindu area, so um, they have like, they believed in a demon called the Barong. I'm sorry mm. if I called it a demon, I don't want to like. Uh, no, yeah, I was like, saying, yeah, but <laughs> Barong is actually a folk core. Did I say really folk tour or folk core? Uh, folk lore. Folk lore. Folk lore. Wow, I've been saying it wrong. It's okay. We, we got you. folk tour is kind of nice. I like the yeah. ring of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you. Keep that in mind. We'll folklore, right? <laughs> yes, folklore. So mm-hmm. folklore called the Barong. Barong is a demon. And what the Balinese, Balinese people believe that it's their god. So um, we went to this um, we went to this place. And, it, and it's very, very sacred and ritual and... There's a lot of statues. And one of my friends was being really dumb. He went to the statue, make fun of the statue. Whoa, it looks weird, blah, blah, blah. Like like touching the head and something. It was very, very rude. Mm. And then when we got home to our Airbnb, guess what? His whole body hurts. Oh, I believe it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I keep telling him, do not make fun of the statue. Because at first he didn't believe anything. He, he, he didn't believe in ghosts and anything at all. So he's like... Oh my God, this statue looking so weird, or like whatever. And I told him, please do not do that. Do not disrespect my country. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. And my friend actually helped me. Don't touch the statue. This is her country. Stop. And I felt really like mad. So when we got to the Airbnb, his whole body hurts. His stomach was the worst, and he couldn't move his body at all. And I'm like, what did I tell you about Bali? <laughs> See, literally goosebumps right now, guys. Yeah. Bali, don't play with them don't well, play anything in that's Bali. a fair and safe thing to say about Very any place so. <laughs> you know? yeah well i mean like the last entity you want to piss off is a deity to right, begin exactly. with so yeah. it's like exactly. and i totally believe that his stomach was hurting because uh, and i'm pretty sure definitely with hindu religion that they believe your uh, core That's is right. the center of right. your power. That deity was very upset. I'm sure. Oh, it very, was like, very. let me zap you real quick of yeah. all your energy. You know. Very. Yeah, and it's it's it gets very confusing in uh, with with a lot of the Asian deities and things. Um, I I had a martial arts instructor who had a a statue, uh, an altar really to um, the Chinese god of war, Quan Ti, and I learned about Quan Ti as the god of war. And I'm like, oh, god of war, Quan great. Went to, uh, and so now I'm an adult, I'm at a Chinese restaurant, and I look over, and there's Quan Ti. Yep. Yeah, the law altar, you know, he's, he has, you know, the Don Dao, the big bladed, you know, spear looking thing, and, and he's, he's right there. I'm like, oh, they've got an altar to Quan Ti, they must be martial artists. So I ask, you know, oh, I- I- are you martial artists? And they look over, and they're like, oh, no, that's Quan Ti. And I was like, yeah, but Quan Ti's the god of war. And they're like, he's the god of war and tofu. <laughs> tofu, I love and I was like, tofu I guys, it's it's delicious food. Excuse me, and they're like, yeah, he's the god of tofu, and I'm like, I am sorry, I don't understand. And <laughs> technically, he's, he's the god of 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 like agriculture, but more specifically, soy agriculture, sure. thereby deriving to god of tofu. But it really freaked me out. I was like, what? 
what are you saying? And I was like, because gods take on a lot of responsibilities in different cultures, and you never know when you're stepping on a god's toes. You know, yeah. so just be respectful. Just be Don't like, oh, disrespect his yeah. tofu. I'm glad I wasn't <laughs> standing in front of him uh, going, oh, tofu is terrible. I yeah. hate tofu. And it's like, oh, Quanti's going to chop you in half. Tofu yeah. is the most delicious food ever. I oh, love it. Mapo tofu, guys. <laughs> yeah, Chinese, my Chinese culture. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So, I, I love that we kind of like started talking a little bit about haunted objects too, mm. because yeah. that we can definitely uh, correlate anywhere in the world too, just because um, even in this room, we've got so many haunted objects, which I, I got a trunk I was, full. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can go ahead and get my, 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 my kit, yeah. <laughs> my, my, haunted, my haunted goodies my, my wife won't let me bring into the house. The, no. We actually have um, something that, that when you brought up how your mom felt like the spirit of a little girl or something of that nature, it made me wonder, because I have a haunted doll in this theater that was my grandmother's, oh, yeah. but we have never been able to figure out who is in that doll. We have kind of uh, t- dabbled in the idea that maybe, you know, it was uh, maybe her mother or something. Yeah. It's definitely not my grandmother because yeah, yeah. she's got other purposes and let alone, you know, hanging out in a doll all day long. But I wonder if she, that might be what's kind of hanging out in that doll. It's always been haunted since I've ever had it, since I was a small child. Right. So, and... I'm pretty sure because our set designer hates this doll and she hides it. Oh, is it the one in the demon room? It, it used to be. And Shelby took it and hid it somewhere where no one could find it because she just hates the doll so much. I mean, I, I get it. I didn't like the doll either as a child because it, it stares at you. It watches you. It moves and things like that. So she, she might have been pushing well, out some extra She also told me that JT will actually, JT will actually um, hide the doll somewhere and trick her and Shelby would get so mad about it. It moves on its own. It moves on its own. But interesting enough, because dolls are perfect traps. Oh, you yeah, know, absolutely. Um, so a lot of times oh, a spirit will attra- attract its, uh, attach itself to a doll. Because dolls, they look like humans. They have bodies. And that is very attractive to a spirit. You know, um, there was a long period of time when puppetry was outlawed by the church because they believed that puppetry was a type of evocation. You were actually inviting spirits to embody a doll. Yeah. Um, but that concept stands that if you are in a vessel that a child would be drawn to or would pay attention to or interact with you know so dolls they're 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 twofold they could be a child who really loved the doll is still attached to the doll but it's also something that wants children to come around you know mm-hmm. something that wants the interaction that comes from being a child's plaything. I've, I've encountered a lot of scary dolls. Oh, dolls yeah. are, are creepy. Now that um, you guys remind me about dolls, um, not just like um, historical dolls, like even though you buy like a new doll, ghosts would actually love coming to your doll. So one time, um, my mom actually told me this story a long time ago that I remember. So I have like a bunch of dolls back in Hong Kong. Like I love collecting dolls, especially when I won the in Universal Universal Studios, I won this big doll the, from The Simpsons, the clown Simpson. What is he named? Oh, uh, it was Scratchy or something? No, uh, like, Krusty. What? Krusty the Clown. Krusty. Krusty. Yeah. So I won this big doll, Krusty, at Universal Studios Hollywood. So I brought it back to Hong Kong, and I put it there, and I um, collect a bunch of dolls. So I haven't cleaned like that area for like six months because I've been busy with school. So my mom was like, you know what? I'll clean it. I will help you. So when she was cleaning it and she moves the dolls and the dust, there's like lots. She saw thousands of spirits probably like crumpled together and then gushed into her body and went out after my mom, after my mom moved all the dolls, literally gushing in her body. And she just felt like she froze for like a good five minutes and like, whoa, what? And then she called me, you got to go home now. You got to go home now. I'm alone. I'm alone. Because at the time I was like with friends and she wants me to go home so bad because she was panicking. So I ran home. She's like, you need to throw away these dolls. I'm like, why? I love them. Do you know how many souls there are inside that big doll and some of the small dolls, Luna? Literally gushing into me when you haven't cleaned this for six months and all the dust. I'm like, oops. And she's like, and I told her, I thought Ghost only liked to come I thought Ghost only likes to come to, like, dolls only when it's, like, haunted or belongs to Mm. someone. And she's like, Mm. nope. 
they like to go into other dolls or new dolls, whatever they like. Yeah. So be careful of keeping dolls. That's what my mom said. I'm like, okay. All my, all my life, I get the question about does something have to be old? Does it have to be creepy? Does it have to be? And no, absolutely not. Uh, spirits are very opportunistic. Uh, anything that 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 can garner human attention oftentimes is a high. You know, I'm surprised that we don't have a lot of stories about haunted phones. Yeah. You know, a lot of stories about you know the haunted tech world. I'm sure it's coming, but the truth of the matter is. Whatever humans put their affection and attention on can draw spirits. Pets, a lot of times, are victim of harassment because we spend so much time adoring them that spirits are like, I want that adoration. I want that, you know. Um, And with dolls, it's an interesting thing because spirits, in my estimation, spirits have connections to things. And let's say I go into a building that is very haunted and a spirit says, oh, I like this guy. And he'll grab onto me and piggyback home with me. Well, it can't maintain it because it has a connection somewhere else. And as hard as it tries to hold on to me, that connection somewhere else is pulling on it. So I always tell people, if you've been to a haunted place, don't go straight home. Stop somewhere else because the ghost might let go there and try to find something to attach to. But if it makes it to your house, it's going to look for something to attach to. And one of the most likely things to do is a figure that looks like a human. You know, one of the most frightening, scary, haunted objects I ever came across was a little figurine. It was a... It was a clown dressed as a bear, which was... So many things wrong with it. And it was like balancing on a ball. So it was a little figurine. It had a human face, but it was painted like a clown and a bear body. Very weird, but the item itself just created such dread and such force. And it was just one of those things. And um, I was trying to help a person, like, deal with their, a haunting in their house. And I, I kind of derived to, I don't think it's this thing. Because this thing makes me go, blah. And, and I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm not sensitive like that. But it was broadcasting loud to me. And I'm like, you got to get rid of it. I was like, well, it was a gift, you know, <laughs> and I was like, it's a terrible gift. <laughs> Whoever gave it to you really didn't like you. Um, and so they told me where they got it. I took the, the, it back to the store. Uh, it was an antique store, antiques. And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> I would like to return this. And he looked at it and he's like, yeah, right. and he put it in the window. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I, I've sold that thing four times in the last 10 years. It always comes back because people can't stand to have it in their house. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, and I'm sure. like, you can't put the... Put the. <laughs> he's like, well, the next victim will come around. Right, exactly. Someone else will buy it. You know, you, yeah. he, he's not so losing he's money. Just, he's just not going to say anything how haunted that doll is? Well, you know, and I like to think this is true of antique dealers. They just, it, it doesn't phase them. They're, they're not interested in, oh. in, in that. They're interested in the history of it. And anything that happens to be attached to it, it does not. It's not. It doesn't factor into the business. Right. Um, same antique store sold a very haunted painting that was hanging in an inn, and they really like guests of the inn were like, "This painting freaks me out." You know, can we not have it in my room? And so they <laughs> they moved out of the room into a hallway. People were like, "Yeah, I walk by and it freaks me out." And um, and he was telling me the story. He was like, "Yeah, they brought the painting back," and I was like, "That's weird." Uh, you know, no one's ever complained about the painting before, but it was a painting of a man, and there's an, another painting of his wife, and they've always hung on walls side by side, but this one in just wanted the man and separated the two paintings, mm. and then oh. everybody got yeah, everybody got very freaked out. Yeah, of course. And so they brought it back, and apparently, that that seemed to do the trick. So the thing with like the technology and spirits, mm. I find that they tend to go for things that are simple communications, Mm -hmm. like children's toys that talk. Um, I actually had an experience with a children's toy that my mom told me about. So my little sister used to love Teletubbies a lot. So she had all of these Teletubbies that talked. Um, you press their button and oh, they, yeah, sure. they would oh, just yeah. be like, burr, 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 or whatever. Um, <laughs> and so she had so many of these, but the, the, I believe it was the yellow one. For some reason, it would just talk on its own all the time. It freaked my mom out because she would like, she'd like hide it and it would come back out. She would 
she'd like try to take the batteries out and it would still talk and whatnot. I'm like thinking of that now because she was telling me this probably like six years ago. And I was like, dude, just throw it away. Just give it away or something, you know? It's Especially if you if you get like young, young children. I had a friend who had um, one of those like uh, little ch- uh, baby angel statues mm-hmm. and their like two-year-old used to go up and talk to it, just babble, babble, babble and put its ear against its mouth and as if it was getting information back and forth and it was kind of creepy and i was like well that's interesting because it makes you wonder if you're if you're dealing with the fact that spirits can attach themselves to virtually right. anything and you know the younger a child is the closer it is to the source you know the begin the, what happens before we we're alive and what happens after we're alive the younger a child is the closer it is to being in that well of whatever (laughs) and, and, and having access to that information. So very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I do want to say thank you to Luna for joining us again. You were always a wealth of interesting stories and lots of creepy things that creepy, very creepy. I love to hear about it. So um, I would also like to learn more about Indonesian ghosts because I haven't lived I only live in Indonesia till I was eight years old. So coming back to my uncle and learning all these ghosts is like mind blowing. So I can't wait to talk more about Indonesian ghosts, but I've learned a few that in the past months that I just forgot the names because scary, you know? Well, maybe one day we can zoom your uncle and he can give us more insight and creepy things. That'll be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, we will be back next week with more content for all of y'all. Uh, make sure to follow us on TikTok and Instagram at the Savannah Underground. And we're going to be posting lots of little snippets of ghosty things on there. Also, we are planning to come out with merch for y'all. So please feel free to send us comments, send us messages of things that you might want to see on that. So with that being said, I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And, and I'm Luna. And Bye. Luna. Stay spooky, y'all.